Okay, you're welcome to another session for UGBS 202 Business Mathematics. We are continuing with our session on integration. Today we want to look at approximate integration, some other dimension of the definite integrals. Now, here we looked previously, in the previous lesson, we looked at the case where we have a definite area under a curve that we actually would want to estimate and we use the normal uh, integration approaches. Here we want to use a rule which we call the trapezium rule, a very old uh, approach that has been in existence way before. Now supposing we want to estimate the area under a curve and it kind of seems a little difficult to use the normal approach we can actually divide the curve or that area we are interested in into a number of trapezo or trapezoids or trapeziums or however you want to call it. And well, just calculate the area of the trapezoids and then put them together. I'll show you something. But well, from business, uh, what's it called? From basic uh, algebra, we know this is the area for a trapezoid. One, of, one half the horizontal distance and the vertical and that kind of whatever distance. Well, so, well, that wasn't necessary for you, so just putting it down for you to see how we would and, uh, get the concept. Now, for instance, let's look at this. Supposing we are interested in the area of this curve, right? What we are saying is using the trapezoid rule, you kind of try to divide this area into a number of equal sized trapezoids or trapeziums and then find the area of each trapezium, trapezium and then sum those areas then that will give you an approximation of the entire area under this curve. Very interesting approach. So here from this uh, diagram we have here I just kind of try to put together an, an intuitive approach to how we do it. So for instance I have A. Now the distance from A to the next point is just the horizontal distance. And this horizontal distance is the same for all the trapezoids. That's why I said we kind of try to divide the area under this, this curve into equal trapezoids. Now, think about it. Because we say it is equal, they must have equal base. And so the distance from A to this point is A plus H then from a to this point is a plus 2h and then a plus 2h and it goes on and on and on and on and on like that okay so i try to put together what i've just done in this diagram here so if i want to find the area the total area of all the trapezoids put together i have one half the, dis the horizontal distance so now let's try and see whether we can put this together so this is i'm don't worry too much about this expression, the f of a. It is just a, uh, let's say, a fancy way of writing the a, a plus a. But what we call here is what we call the functional notation. We want to write it in functional form. That's why we have it as, this, so that it makes the formula easier or more mathematical to understand. So here, this point a here is my f of a. Now this point here, this because now we've moved a horizontal distance, we've moved from a to this point, so a plus h, will give us this distance. So it is f of a plus h. Then it moves on and on and on and on and on like that. Now, if I am able to put all this together, all I have done is just try to factor out the, the recurring uh, variables. Now, look at this. If you take f of a, it is alone. But look at this. We have f of a plus h plus f of a plus h. You do see it. So if I see all these and I want to kind of put them together, I can just factor out all of them, those that are recurring, and then we can just have a simple expression. Well, this is more like deriving the formula, which uh, I am pretty sure a lot of you may not be so much interested in, but it will be fun if you could just understand the intuition behind this. So you just try and see, try and kind of factor out all the values that keep recurring over and over. And then all you're going to have is this final expression, right? So you're going to have an expression that has an f of a, 2f of a plus h plus 2f of a plus h, 2 plus, till we get to the last value here, which is another f of b, which 
doesn't recur. And so, you see, the good thing about this is like, for the trapezoid rule, there's just a simple trick. All you just have is one, two, 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 one, right? It doesn't matter the, the number of trapezoids you have, but the first one, or the first term, has a coefficient of one. The last term also has a coefficient of one. And all the terms in between the distance, between the first term and then the second and the last term, all will have two, 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 two as their coefficients. Okay, so let's see how we apply this wonderful rule to estimate the area under a curve. Okay, so supposing that I have a function as this, representing a curve. So it says that find the area under the curve between this distance, 3, 2, and this is the function of this curve. Now, given that n is 4, now what this n here giving you is just telling you the number of trapezoids that should be formed or that we can have under that curve between this interval 3 and 2. Now, this is the, in fact, this is the formula or the expression that we need from all that I was explaining from from the previous slide, this is where we want to arrive at, okay? So it says that the formula says h over two into bracket f of x zero plus two f of x one plus two f of x two plus two f of x three plus two f of x four. Now think about it. This is a simple something you should do. Whenever you have, you are given a number of trapezoids, let's say four, in your expression, you are going to have Five, because we have this first term f of x zero, and so you're going to have one, two, three, four plus the first term. So if they said our n was six, we will have seven expressions here. If our n was five, we will have six expressions here. Okay. Now, from the expression, how do we find our horizontal distance, the base of each trapezoid? We say it is expressed as b minus a over n where b, this is b, this is what, a, like we said in the previous slide. So the interval, a and b, a is the smaller unit, b is the bigger unit. Okay, so b minus a over n will give you that horizontal distance, this h that we need, which is in front of the formula. And so here, we are actually estimating the area under the curve, or the interval three, two. So this three is my b, and then two is my a. So three minus two divided by n, n which is given as four, is given as 0 0.25. In other cases, one over four. Okay, so our h is this 0 0.25, is that equal distance of each trapezoid. So now let's try and put it into the expression. So here, if our h is 0 0.25, we are starting from point two. So F zero, this is the first point, H over two into bracket two, which is A. So if you take your mind back to the expression, see we had F of A, then two F of A plus H, then A plus two H and it goes in that order. So here F of A is two, which is the two given us here. Then the next trapezoid would be F of a plus h. What is our h? We found h to be 0 0.25. So 2 plus 0 0.25 will give us 2.25. And do remember it has a coefficient of 2. So 2 into bracket 2.25. Then plus 2 into bracket. So now we must add another horizontal distance, which is so this 2.25 plus the 0 0.25 will give us the 2.50 times two, then it goes on and on until we get to the final value, which is what? F of B, F of B, which is here, like it is stated in the expression. And what is our B? Our B in this case is three. Okay, so we've, we've been able to substitute the values into this expression. So now let's see what we'll do next. The next thing to do is having found these values, 2.25, 2.250, 2.75, and then 3. Take each of these values, each of these values, substitute it into the expression, and then it will give us some values which we are going to use to continue in the estimation. And so I take my 2.25, 
So first I take, I start with the first variable, which is f of a, so two. I take two, wherever I see u, I fix in or I substitute two. So I am taking these values, the values I have in the brackets, this two, 2.25, 2.250, and then 2.75, and then three. I'll take them one after the other and substitute them into this expression. And then I'll find some values for them. And so when I take two, and I'll now have four raised to the four times two squared plus six, I have 22. You can confirm that with your calculators. And then take 2.25, put it here. So four times 2.25 squared plus six will give you 26.25. I do the same for 2.5 and I have 31. I do the same for 2.75. I put it here into this expression and then I have this and I do the same for three and I have that. Then the next thing to do is multiply each of the values. So we are kind of trying to simplify what is in this long term. 22 has a coefficient of one, so 22 times one will be 22. Now, this expression times two will give us this. The 31 times two will give us this. This times that will also give us this. This times this will also give us that. Okay, so gradually we are getting there. So now let's, let's see. So if we do all this, this is the total of what we have here. So if I sum it all, you end up having 251. But here, the expression says h over 2. In fact, that is finding, if you go back to what I gave you from the beginning, the area of, of, of the trapezoid, it is 1 over 2h, which is the same as h over 2, then into bracket all the functions in, in the bracket. So h over 2, what is our h? We found our h to be 0 0.25. And so 0 0.25 divided by 2 is the same as 0 0.125. And so the 0 0.125 multiplied by the sum of 22 plus 52.5 plus 62 plus 72.5 plus 42, which per my calculation was 251. I multiply it by 0 0.125 and then what I have is 31.375. This 31.375 is the approximated area of the the, the interval under the curve. Okay, so this is how we use the trapezoid rule to actually estimate the area. So, well, in actual sense, I think uh, because it's an approximation, well, we will not actually use a definite equal to sign. It has to be the approximated sign, the kind of curvy looking equal to sign. But, what, but this is an approximation because think about it. You see, the idea, the reason why we say it's an approximation is, well, from my diagram, my trapezoids look perfect. But it is very possible that when you try to fit in your trapezoid, there will be some spaces, right? Because it's a curve. Well, this curve even looks very gentle. Suppose it is a more like a parabola or goes more steeper. You see, the trapezoids will fit in, but may not fit in perfectly. And so there will be some spaces that will not be accounted for. And so that's why we actually say that it is uh, an estimation. Now, let's look at another rule. The other one is what we call the Simpsons rule. It is also another an, uh, approximate integral. It's also another technique we use to approximate the, int the, the area under a curve. Well, it follows the same idea of the trapezoid rule. And so we, we are just going to go through it. The calculations, the ideas, everything just follows the trapezoid rule. The only difference here is the formulas differ a little bit. Now, here, you see, the Simpsons rule is born from the idea of fitting parabolas under the curve. So if you want a specific interval or a specific area under a curve, you fit some parabola under the curve and that will give you three points. You have one, you are, when, you when you put in your parabola, you're gonna have three points. And so the, in deriving it, unlike the case of a trapezoid where we just need two points or two bases, here we need three points. And so we kind of put it together, and this happens to be the final expression for this uh, Simpson's rule, where we say it's h over 3, f of x0 plus 4x of... And so here, this is where the difference lies. Now, you see, for the case of the trapezoid rule, the coefficients were 
one, two, 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 one. But for the case of a Simpson's rule, we have one, four, two, four, two, four, two, one. Now, if you have to use the Simpson's rule, then the number of n or the, the number of parabolas you're fitting must be even. This one is a caveat. It, it, it must be satisfied before we can use the Simpson's rule. And so for using the Simpson's rule, our n must always be an even number. And so the difference here is with the coefficients for trapezoid rule where we had 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1. Here we will have 1, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 1. Okay, so that is how it goes on. And so given a certain function, you will find your h. Finding your h is the same idea of b minus a over n, which will give you your h. And then you also take the h and then evaluate all the, the functions. So if you have the interval like we had in the first instance between 3 and 2, whatever your h is, you take the first value, which is a, and then you keep adding the h value to it until you get to the last uh, portion, which is the, the other extreme of the interval. And then the coefficients are there. The first value, which x of x of, let's say, x0, or x of a, will have a coefficient of 1. The subsequent should be 4, then the alt it alters to 2, then 4 to 2, then 4 to 2, then 4. Then the last one will also come back to 1. And then it follows the same approach. Take the values, substitute it into the equation or the equation of the, the, or the function being given you, and then break it down just as we did for the, the trapezoid room. I hope you enjoyed this section. Uh, we'll end it here, and then I'll see you in the section section. Okay.